Hey everybody, what's going on? I mentioned a TOA team that I was running a couple of videos ago in a, in a summon video, I think, and said I would do a video kind of showcasing that team. So if you're newer to the game, this is a great TOA normal team for you to run. I'm running it through hard right now, actually, and we are currently up to 46. So we're doing pretty well. We're 22 days in on this account. We got, we got our first TOA clear yesterday. So uh, I, I, I wanna talk about the team. It's very easy to obtain and then we'll take a look at it in action, okay? It autos a lot of the waves. Up in the 90s, there were a couple of stages I had to take over on. The Monkey King stage is particularly difficult. Uh, there's a couple of stages you might have to manual a little, as, you, as you progress a little bit. But for the most part, they autoed through the waves and I would manual the bosses and sometimes it was a little bit tricky. But again, they got it done and we're still very new. <laughs> it's a very new account. So clearing TOA this soon is, is pretty great. It is going to be Veramos, who I've talked about kind of prioritizing in the fusion. They're, they're, he's not the only one to get. I can't tell you which monster to fuse first. There's a lot of great options. They, they've done a really good job filling out that fusion hexagram. So I like Veramos, I went for Veramos. There's other ways you could go that are also going to serve you very well. But for the purposes of this team, he's Veramos. He's really, really good uh, for numerous reasons we'll talk about. We've got Verd, who I've also talked about fusing. You're going to use him in Dragons for a long time. Forever, potentially. Uh, he's also good, again, here. He's good in a lot of places. He's decent in Guild Wars. I think he gets used in RTA a bit. I'm not, I'm not real sure what's going on in RTA these days. But we'll, we'll catch up on that soon. Lauren, who is fantastic and so important to this team, so important to this team. Bella, who I just can never sing Bella's praises enough. Bella's an amazing champ. And Fran. As you can see, none of this is really too hard to come by. You gotta do some light SD farming, but it's really not that bad. It, it's, a, it's a very obtainable team. The worst of it is fusing Veramos. And if you, you know, are following your summoner's way missions, it's gonna let you pick most of the food and then you really just need to farm the dark yeti i can't remember if it lets you pick four champs or three champs either way you can get a bulk of, of the fusion food for veramos straight from those missions so it's really not that bad now let's talk about how they're geared i have i, I was running veramos on a violent set and he was just too slow he wasn't doing enough for me so we moved him over to a swift set for now which is very still very viable okay the swift set helps him turn cycle more passive procs he gets back around to that stun the only thing here is we have skilled him up now you can decide how you want to go about doing this i just use devilmon some people will tell you keep fusing copies for skill ups and that is a very efficient way to do it in in the sense of devilmons but it's going to take you a lot longer it's going to cost you a lot of other resources it's up to you to decide what works for you okay for me I just needed the devil mines. I, want, I wanted to get the cooldown on the stun and I ended up having to skill him up all the way, which again is not the end of the world because he ma it makes it more likely to land dots as well, but I really wanted this cooldown. The cooldown is pretty important here, okay? So uh, I skilled him up. It's You can probably make it happen without skilling him up, but again, it's gonna make your life a lot easier if you get that cooldown, all right? So we've got him on swift energy. We went speed HP HP. And we're worrying about his speed, his HP, and, and a decent amount of accuracy. We don't want him getting resisted. We want him landing stuns. We want him landing, landing dots when he takes turns on the waves. So uh, th those are the stats we're going to be focusing on him. If you can get him on a, on a decent violence set that has decent HP and accuracy, you can probably settle for somewhere around, I don't know, 150 speed. Uh, you know, may maybe, maybe 140s. I wouldn't go too low, though. I think mine was at like plus 29, and that just wasn't fast enough for me. So uh, this way he gets to go first. He can try to drop a stun early on and let everybody else get to work, all right? Here we've got Verd, who we're running on Violent. I like him on Violent a lot. And you're gonna go speed. You're almost certainly gonna need to go crit right here for the four. And then uh, I went HP for the last one. I'm not concerned with his damage. I'm concerned with his ability to stay alive and his ability to get turns. So we've got him pretty fast. Uh, you know, for where we're at in the game and for having him on a violent set. And we went violent blade to make sure we get that crit rate. He needs that crit rate. If his passive isn't proccing, he's not helping you, okay? His critical hits boost the turn meter of all allies. 
he hits twice with both of his skills. And when he starts violent proccing, you're just gonna turn cycle around them like crazy, all right? But he's got to land crits to help. His, otherwise, his skills are irrelevant. <laughs> he's not doing anything for you. He um, it's the passive, all right? Next up, we've got Lauren. It's just so good, man. She's so stupid good. We we just got her on whatever worked. I auto engraved her and let it fill in the slots and it went speed, HP, defense. We want her fast, we want her to stay alive, and we want her to have accuracy, all right? So 55% is good enough for me. She misses occasionally, but it's been fine. And um, I, th I think people tend to go violent on her. Swift is also not a bad idea. I'll eventually probably re rework her into violent. But for now, this was fine. So it's not even really like a special set, really, all right? Her skills are so good. Here, she's got a slow on the A1. Here, she's got a two hitter, chance to remove beneficial effects and heal block. And then the passive, with each attack, she reduces attack bar and puts a defense break. The passive is where the money's at. That turn meter knockback is is so important it's so important to utilize that appropriately to to watch where all the enemies turn meters are and rob turns when you can there's certain waves and certain boss stages where you're going to need to pay attention to the turn meters okay because you need to be stealing turns away from the from the dangerous enemies to give your team more of an opportunity to turn cycle all right Moving on, we've got Bella, defense down on the A1, strip on the A2, heal and turn meter boost on the A3. Again, very simple, very straightforward, but very effective. The thing with Bella is you will occasionally be using this A3 even when you don't need heals because we want to keep turn cycling. We want Vera to get back around to the stun. We want Lauren to get a turn so she can knock back some turn meter. We want Verd to get turned so he can help us spin around. Um, so sometimes you'll be doing that even when you don't need a heal. Don't be hanging on to this just for the heal, all right? Use that turn meter boost. And then Fran is here doing Fran stuff, all right? The attack down can be very handy in certain places. Here we've got a cleanse and heal, and then here we've got a heal with immunity and an attack buff. And great support. The immunity is huge in, in some of these places, okay? And real quick before we move on, I don't know why I didn't talk about Bella's and Fran's runes <laughs> the first time around, but Bella's in Swift... I'm sorry, Violent Focus, and we went Speed. Bella's still in that really crappy build. I haven't even upgraded Bella's runes yet. I've talked about Bella's build, which might be why I thought I didn't need to do it in this video, but for those that haven't seen me talk about my Bella's build, it's very crap right now. Bella's very slow, not that tanky, accuracy's not high enough, and still, Bella is fantastic. So, Swift Energy, Swift Focus, Violent Energy, Violent Focus are all solid options for Bella. Don't go too slow for Violent. I'm probably, same thing I said about Vero, like I'm, I'm like right around the cutoff, I would say for Violent for what we're trying to do right now. But the HP and accuracy really needs to come up. Um, I, I, I'm, I, I think I'm going to look at upgrading Bella <laughs> after this video, see if we can do any better. But ultimately, you want to go speed HP HP, okay? And then the sets that I talked about, Violent and Focus or Energy or Swift and Focus or Energy. And then for Fran, Fran is on Violent Will. And I think... Yeah, Fran is on a, a hybrid of the runes that the game gave us and runes we found. I've started moving my runes around. But speed HP HP for Fran and Violent is a great idea. Will is not necessary for what we're doing here. Uh, Will is really more something you're going to use in PvP. So it doesn't have to be this. It can be Violent Energy. I guess you could go Focus if you wanted to really lean into the attack down and stuff. My Fran has 8 accuracy. She's still pretty reliable with the debuffs and stuff. Um, but if you wanted to do that a little bit, you could. Otherwise, Energy is a great second set. And then I'd say Swift or Violent for the main set. All right, just get the speed and HP up and then and then get some accuracy on her as, as you can. It's not as important to have accuracy on her as it is to have it on Lauren and Bella and Vera. But if you wanted to throw a little on there, you could. You saw how mine, you're, I guess you're, I could say, you're going to see how mine performs with eight accuracy. So do with that information what you will. All right, but I, there, I don't know why I didn't talk about the runes the first time, but now let's go ahead and get back to what we're doing.
So that's the team, very easy to obtain. You see Fran is skilled up, that's easy to do. Lauren did not have these skill ups until about 10 minutes before this video. I, I've farmed a, a dungeon and I'm starting to get some copies of her to get skill ups. So she didn't even have skill ups when we accomplished this. If you've got skill ups in her, even better. All right, she'll be even more reliable. But uh, Bella is skilled up, Verd is not, Vero is. All right, so everybody's pretty much skilled up except Verd and Lauren. Now, let's jump over and talk about them. I actually thought I was going to struggle on the boss stage. I reckon we can do the boss stage and you can you can see it in action. And we'll just we'll just kind of do it all, try to do it all in one take. The waves here are much harder than the boss in my opinion, <laughs> in my experience anyway. This wave in particular can be real tricky because of the Junos. All right. So, we are going to go ahead and drop the stun because if we want to lock her down if we can. Um, we are not going to bother with immunity just yet because we're going to keep her from getting a turn. We're going to use our crits on the Junos since he's not going to be placing any debuffs and he's much he's he's less likely to crit with elemental disadvantage. So we're going to use our crits on Juno and then we're going to steal turns from these two, all right? So we can Here's what we're going to do. We're going to knock this turn meter back to keep her stunned longer. We're going to boost. And Lauren's going to get another turn before this Annabelle, uh, hopefully. I still don't think we need to bother with the, with the buff yet. And again, we want to avoid debuffs on these, on the Junos, all right? So now we're going to go back after her for the turn cycle. The Violent procs are so clutch. Now we're going to knock her turn meter back because she's not stunned and we don't want her cleansing. But this is what I mean when I say you kind of have to be careful. You have to pay attention to what's going on. Just This will apply. We're going to go ahead and do this now. This will apply in other, other stages where you notice you're having trouble. I'm, I'm doing it on the boss stage so that we can get to the boss and also talk about the boss. But the, the same principles are going to apply. You need to be paying attention to what's going on with their turn meters because Lauren is very key in helping us continue to do what we need to do, which is run laps around the enemies, right? I did not mean to do that. That was a total brain fart. <laughs> um, so we're just gonna let her do what she's gonna do. And we'll go ahead and try to drop some stuns. There we go. That was a big hit. It was an oddly big hit. So, since they're both stunned, let's try to kill this Juno before she gets a turn. And those debuffs get the proc. Alright, so one Juno down unexpectedly. I don't know why we did such big damage to her. That seems like a strange amount of damage. I think we can get this Annabelle out of here. See, they're not really a threat. It's more of when we start putting debuffs on them and their passive gets the proc. And then if, if, if they've got buffs to strip and turn into dots, that can be a little annoying. But with our team, we've got enough sustain that it's not really going to be a, a big issue. And now we're going to hope we can get a little knockback here. And then maybe we can get... No, we couldn't get Lauren up. Doesn't matter. Vera's going to take care of all that for us. Now she's definitely going to go down. And we're pretty much just going to A1 our way out of this round now, all right? It doesn't really even matter if we keep critting with with Verd. We'll, we'll try to catch it if necessary, but we're in pretty good shape, right? We'll give Fran a heal. And now we're just going to A1 our way out. And we can safely A1 on a single Juno because she's not going to get a turn. Between Bird and, and Lauren, we're going to cycle around her. She's not going to get to go. So it doesn't matter how many debuffs we stack on her now. It's just when there's multiple and we're we're hitting, we're spreading debuffs around. That's when it gets a little bit more dangerous. But he's almost certainly... Well, she got a turn. <laughs> what do you know? Most of the time, she's not going to get a turn. You see, we're not really in any danger, though. Now, the second wave. This one... RNG could get you a little bit here. 
You do need to land some stuns, because if these chicks start getting turns, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna it's gonna hurt. So you you do need to hope you land some stuns here. We got one and we got some turn meter knocked back. We will not use immunity yet. Because we're probably gonna cycle around before they get another turn. But on Fran's next turn, we might have to drop some immunity on everybody. And what we're going to do, in, in kind of the same way that we focused the Junos one at a time, we're going to focus the Veros one at a time. We're going to go ahead and take this turn meter while we can get it. And now we're going to drop immunity. Because they might start getting some turns, and if we could avoid getting put to sleep, that would be great. He gets to cleanse one of them, one of the debuffs, but it's not a big deal. And then once we get once we get the Veros out of here, our life is going to be a lot easier. Get to attack down on her because she's about to get a turn. We didn't land it. Unfortunate. Um, let's just keep going after Vero. We might take a. No, that wasn't so bad. The AI does some funky stuff sometimes too, including your own teams. I've noticed Vero really likes to open up a fight with his A1. I don't know why. But there were times where I would watch him on auto and the first thing of the fight would be Vero just shooting an A1 at someone. And I'm like, why don't you go for the stun? <laughs> why would you not open up with the stun? Um, so you have to be a little careful. We'll go ahead and take immunity one more time just in case they get turns. We really don't want to be taking big hits and catching debuffs. But I think we're just about in territory of a wanting our way out of here. And I think we can probably safely focus them one at a time. I don't think we're in any danger now. She will probably not get a turn. She might get another turn, the one on the left, but she's used her scary skill now, so I'm not sweating it too bad. Somehow she still got a turn. That's surprising. Usually when when we when we single in on someone, they don't get a turn. Kind of odd, but again. It's too late for us to be in any danger, so we're going to just A1 our way out. And now we're going to go into the last round completely fresh. Which is important. You want to make sure you have everything available to you when you enter this last round. Not quite as important on her because you've got a couple of turns before you're in real trouble. So if you're unfamiliar, what she's going to do is she's going to split into two different, I think they're called incantations. She's got three possible ones. And every time she does it, she's gonna split two. They have different abilities. And basically, you, you have to be careful about what you do when they're on the battlefield because they can be very problematic. So when she splits, we'll talk about what she split into and how we're gonna deal with it. In my opinion, at least for this comp, what is the red one? It, there's blue, green, and red. I'm familiar with blue and green. Red, I haven't seen in a long, long time. Is it this one? We'll see. We'll see what she splits into. I can't remember what red does off the top of my head. I feel like it's a counterattack one, but I'm not entirely sure. So anyway, for now, we're just going to A1-er. So she split green and red. Good. We get to see what red does and see if we can solve this problem. Attacks all enemies, provoking them for one turn with a 50% chance. Instantly counterattacks with mind break on every incoming attack. Okay. So, we have to be careful, right? Now, if we can stun them, their passives don't work. If they're stunned, then then they've just become punching bags and we can do whatever we want to them. So the green one attacks all enemies and recovers HP by 100% of the damage dealt. When attacked, absorbs and recovers up to 25% of the attack bar. Uh, this is tough. <laughs> this can be a tough one to deal with, so we really don't want to do anything with her until she's stunned. We don't want our attack bar constantly getting absorbed. Granted, also, we don't want to be catching a lot of counterattacks. We're in a situation where we kind of have to do what we have to do, right? Uh, the blue one is much easier to deal with because basically with the blue one, as long as you put a defense down on it, it's really not a threat. It has damage that scales off defense. If you throw a defense down on it and cut its damage down like that, you're not really in much danger from it, okay? But our goal here is gonna be to stun them 
keep them from getting unstunned, and dot them. We, we want to stack all the dots on them that we can. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take our immunity now because we're about to start catching some counterattacks and attack bar absorption and stuff. And we want, we want to counter all of that, that that we can. So we're going to go ahead and protect ourselves with immunity. Now I'm going to I'm going to gauge how bad this counterattack is from here. I want to see how bad this is going to hurt. Okay, that's not so bad. Until we start catching debuffs, I don't think that's that bad. So let's go ahead and go after her. We are going to go ahead and boost turn meter. And now we're hoping for some stuns. All right, we got a stun on the red, so we're gonna focus red, all right? Everything we do now is gonna go after red. We're gonna try to avoid, I don't think we have any AOE to worry about except Vera. So the next time Vera gets a turn, and. Uh, or next time he has a day two available, we'll try it again. And if we can get a stun, we'll, we'll figure out what we want to do. But for now, we're going to go after the one that's stunned because she can't counterattack us, right? Passive is now inactive. So we're going to attack her, try to take her out, dot her up the best we can so that if she does end up getting a turn because we switch focus or something, uh, the dots will take her out, all right? But you could see how it could get out of hand. Now, the good news is with this comp, with Lauren on the team, once you get rid of her splits, which we really need to try to do before she absorbs them because then she's gonna be a real problem to deal with. Once you kill the splits and can focus her, it's over because she's not gonna get a turn. Between Verd helping us turn cycle and Lauren knocking back turn meter, she won't get a turn. You can you can hit auto when, when you kill the splits with what we have currently going on, but... Um, it's, it's dealing with the splits that you have to be kind of careful about, right? Now, it looks like we're gonna be able to take the red one out. If we can get a stun here, we can try to switch focus and start trying to keep them both from getting turns. She's about out of the realm of being a, a threat. So now we're gonna hope we can get a stun on green here. And we did. So now what we need to do is really hope one, Fran gets this turn and can knock back turn meter a little bit and give Verd the turn that can give Lauren the turn. If, if we can pull that off, we should be fine. She's gonna die from dots. We don't have to touch her anymore. So we're really hoping for the turn meter knock back here. Think we got it? Maybe maybe we, mm, let's take it again. Let's, let's see if we can get it again, just to be safe. Now Verd got the turn and hopefully now Lauren can get the turn. And I believe, I believe we're gonna be able to keep her from getting a turn now. So we're gonna take this hit from the from Lyrith real quick. Can go ahead and throw up immunity. Bird will give Lauren the turn. Dots are gonna kill her. Green's not gonna be able to get out of the stun. So I believe we're about to be in the clear. And then again, We can now hit auto, and she will not get a turn. I feel pretty confident she won't get a turn. I waited a little while on my first clear to hit auto because I just <laughs> I spent so much time trying to get here that I didn't want him want him to ruin it. But I, I I feel I do feel pretty confident, especially now that we've also got the slow up. She won't get a turn, and they'll, they're they're going to be able to just uh, auto her down. So. It's it's that's the strategy for Lyrith. And again, she's going to split. There's a few different ways she can split, right? She's she's going to split into two, but there's three possibilities. Again, if you see the blue one, the blue one is not really that big of a threat as long as you get a defense down and between Lauren and Bella, that's not going to be a problem. The red one, you have to be careful about the counter attacks. The green one, you have to be careful about attacking because of the attack bar absorption and stuff. Um, but get them stunned, keep them controlled, dot them up, switch focus at the right time, just kind of manage the attack bars. There's no time limit. You don't have to be in a hurry. You can take some time to think about what you think is going to happen. And then again, with this team, once the splits are down, once you've killed the splits, it's over. She's not getting a turn. So uh, we'll cut back at the end of this just so you can see that they are going to kill her. <laughs> uh, and then we'll, we'll get on out of here. All right. So we'll be back in a second. All right, and we're back close to the end of the run. Didn't take as long as I thought it would, but you can see everybody's got completely full health. <laughs> She's not taking a turn. 
This is strangely easy compared to what it used to feel like. This used to be, this used to feel so much more difficult. Um, but there's just a lot more at our disposal now, I think, to make this much more doable. So hopefully this helps you if you're newer and you're, you're feeling maybe a little intimidated by the boss or maybe you're having trouble with some of the waves. That team, I think, honestly can do every single stage in TOA Normal. There was a couple of stages earlier on that I got through with different teams because I hadn't quite settled into this team yet. But once I found this team, it, it literally solved every single problem I had in TOA. So uh, I do think it'll help you out, especially if you're newer. And hopefully seeing the boss stage done in action when we talk to it also helps you out. So uh, go get it. Go get your Transcendent Scroll because I don't know if I talked about it already, but uh, when you finish, if, you, if you've been following your Summoner's Way missions, and you're at the end of it. The last one on intermediate is TLA 100 normal. And when you finish the intermediate line, you get a transcendent scroll, which is a free nat five, guaranteed nat five. So go get your nat five. And uh, if you end up clearing TOA for your first time, let me know in the comments who you get from the transcendent scroll. I think that'll be pretty fun. So good luck guys, I hope it helped. And we'll see you later.